This is the Master Multiscriptor. It was made in Belgium sometime around the 1930s or 40s. Did you ever see something that looks a little strange at first glance? But then you look closer and you realize, yes, this thing is totally crazy. Nothing about this machine seems to make sense. It makes me wonder. I don't know anything about Belgium in the 1930s. But if it was a friend of mine, I'd try to make more of an effort. As far as I can tell, the Master is a very rare find in the U.S. Maybe it's more common in Europe. i never seen or heard of it until I got mine, and I've never seen another one since. There's very little information about it online, and none at all in English. The machine is based on the Trancé mechanism, which was a sliding design invented in France in 1889. You use a stylus, and you stick it in these teeth, and you slide them down to add. There's no gears inside the machine that carry from one digit to another. You have to do that yourself. If you try to add in a way that requires a carry, the thing will get stuck. You can't slide it all the way down, so you slide up instead. And when you get to the top, you go around this little corner and push down, which carries into the next digit. So like 45 plus 73 looks like this. I do 45. And then 73. This basic setup was pretty common. The most popular Trancé device was the Adiator, which I did a video about a while ago. Click over there to check it out if you want to see more about the basic idea. Without an automatic carry mechanism, the Trancé design is mechanically more primitive than other machines of the time. But this sliding setup is easy to miniaturize. That's the whole point. You can get a reasonably capable adding device that easily fits in your pocket. So why would anybody build a desktop-sized Trancé-style machine? People like the Adiator because it's small. So I guess we should make a big one that can't fit in your pocket? It doesn't make any sense to me. It's got a nice little tray for the stylus. That's good. There's nothing really holding it in there, though, so you're probably going to lose it. I don't have the original stylus. I'm using my Adiator stylus. It's very lightweight. It's only 3.5 pounds. But that's actually a bit of a negative for this thing since it slides all over the place. The crank over here has enough resistance that you have to brace the machine if you actually want it to pull. The crank is pretty weird itself. It's for clearing the machine to zero. I actually like being able to see the exposed gears. Just don't get your tie caught in there. This thing down here is weird too. It's another little crank. This one's for a reel of paper. There's another similar thing that's supposed to be sticking out on the other side. It was a little reel of paper that would spool out across the front of the machine and catch in this turny thing over here. Then you could turn this little crank to advance the paper a little bit. The idea was that when you're doing some complicated multiplication or something, you could use the paper to write down digits of intermediate steps. The paper threads under this plate here, so you had to write inside these little circles. It doesn't sound like it would have worked very well. I tried to dig up any old photos or advertisements for this thing that I could find, and I learned something surprising. There was a version of this machine that you could plug in. Now take a moment with me to wonder, what could the plug possibly do in a machine like this? Well, here's the answer. The thing lights up. Now mine's not the electric version, but the electric one is the same design. They just ripped out the electric stuff to make the one I have. If you flip it over, you can see lots of empty space where the wiring would have gone. Anyway, these two things up here are where the lights go. I think they would light up as a signal for a double carry. If you hold this just right, you can see the light shining through. But like everything else here, it's a strange idea and probably wasn't all that helpful. I guess we might as well talk about the obvious. This thing looks very weird. This guy here is pretty threatening. I guess he's the master? The thing is decorated with some kind of barbed wire pattern. This is without a doubt the strangest looking design I've seen on any adding machine. The company made some other machines and they all look crazy too. Their bright designs are really bold and totally unlike other machines of that time or any time that I know of. What a bunch of weird machines. I found an instruction manual for the master in French. Would it surprise you to hear that it's pretty strange? I'll read my own translation of the introduction. I am the little master. My destiny is to do good work with you for many years, five at least since the warranty requires it. Though I have a very gentle character, do not take advantage of my passivity. Do not hurt me. I detest sudden turns of the crank. 
I abhor inconsiderate leverage. I hate falls onto the floor, and also, if I may admit without blushing, I do not have any tenderness for children. I am your little master. Treat me well. In return, count on five years of my faithfulness. Here's something weird. When the master refers to itself in French, it uses female adjectives. So I guess the master is a woman. So I guess this guy isn't the master? Or maybe this guy is actually a woman? I just have so many questions. I think the best way to approach the master is as a piece of abstract art. Don't try to overanalyze it. The master exists. It's strange and evokes complicated feelings. Just let it speak to you. Let him speak to you, or her. I'm here to stop.